Okay, come on. Down. You notice that I helped her a little bit with my left foot. Good. But I never actually touched her leash. But whenever she hesitates, I, I'm not going to wait for her to think about it because if she has to think about it, that means that we have to make her, we have to teach her at a higher level because all these commands need to trigger her to do the command as if it's just a reflex. She hears it, boom, she does it. So if I say, if I say down, I'm just going to do that and it triggers her to go straight down. And at this point, I don't, I don't really even have to apply any pressure on the leash. That, <clears throat> that uh, seeing my foot right next to her go up, she's triggered to go there. So most of the time, I never have to do the foot thing anyway, but you may have to. She's not used to doing this with you. So if she doesn't go right away, you, don't, you never repeat any command. You just lift your foot like that. And you may have to stand on the leash for a second. There'll be a little bit of pressure. She'll collapse and that's good, that's fine, but you won't have to do it very long. Because if you do my moves, she'll start doing what she's doing for me. She just needs to adjust to, to doing the new, the new patterns with you because she's not used to that yet, obviously. And stay is built into down, so if I say down, I step away, I walk around, anything like that, you notice it's exactly like the stationing mat, the mat exercise. That's why that mat exercise is your foundation exercise. If you can only do one thing with her a day, you do the mat exercise for five minutes and that encompasses so many things. It encompasses the, the sit stay, the down stay, and her being calm because it's really a, a calming exercise. You walk around, make noises, knock on the door, whatever, she stays calm. So because she's good at the mat exercise, whatever she does on the mat carries over to real life. So she'll do a good down stay anywhere. Good. When you want to release her out of a down stay, stand back next to her. She's always waiting for you to come back to get her. Never ever call her out of a down stay or sit stay because if the dog starts getting used to being called out of a down stay or sit stay, they'll become anticipatory because they're going to be like on edge waiting for you to do it and wanting to rush over to you. And the whole purpose of teaching them a rock solid down stay where nothing makes them get up unless you release them in one certain way is that it stabilizes them and makes them calm. If you're calling them out of down stays and sit stays like in a dog show, that's like a 1950s dog show thing, you're going to make her excited and over anticipatory. So no matter where you go, what you do, there's only one way she ever leaves. That's when her owner comes back next to her and releases her like this. Okay, and sit. This is a really important part. Notice how I just reinforced the SIT. I pulled up a little bit because she was sniffing on the ground and she was getting distracted. So when you release her out of a down stay, it's okay. And then you have her sit and you release her from a calm sit stay. Go. That way she'll keep the calmness of that particular down stay. Every time you, you release her from a down stay in that way, she'll be a little bit calmer. If you just release, release her straight out of a down stay, she's gonna anticipate that she's almost free and she's gonna start jumping up and running off and once again, that will uh, create overstimulation in her. So remember, releasing her out of a downstay, she's still on the clock until she sits. And you see how easy it is to, to enforce a calm sit stay and a calm release when she's sitting. And then she'll leave a downstay like this instead of jumping up and taking off. So that's really important. It's how you end this exercise is really important. So uh, that's why I wanted to show you that.